Hi everyone, Lisa Haven here. And as we inch closer and closer to this year's election, more information is beginning to surface about both Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. Now, my job as a reporter slash journalist is to get you the truth, no matter where it lies, and to weed fact from fiction. And that is exactly what I want to attempt to do in today's news report. Now, most recently, it has been leaked on various um, various news reports and specifically alternative media because mainstream media isn't worth a lick uh, but a lot of Hillary's health has been brought into question we know back in 2012 she had a pretty severe concussion that led to a six-month recovery period and likely brain damage but most recently Infowars has released a bombshell and I believe yesterday they released it August um get the date for you, 14th that was released on Infowars by Joe Biggs and, and Alex Jones, specifically detailing how the Secret Service has come up to them and told them that they believe Hillary is really sick and said how they are spending about half a million dollars on her medical needs, uh, from fixing stairs to fixing cars, and that many in the Secret Service believe that she might have Parkinson's disease. Now, they don't know for certain certain what she has, but they do suspect that that could be an issue. And based on history's past and other presidents whose medical issues have been covered up, it shouldn't be something that should be ignored. On the other hand, information has also surfaced about Donald Trump's um, campaign manager, Paul Manafort, who, uh, according to CNN and New York Times, they are leaking and stating that they have accepted uh, large sums of money from Ukrainian pro-Russian uh, supporters uh, to help the campaign. Now, if there is any truth to that, well, time is going to tell. I know Paul Manafort denies it, but nonetheless, uh, what I want to do is bring in Larry Nichols, Clinton insider, to give us more information on both of these aspects. He personally believes, and I think I could, I agree, that Paul Manafort could be a plant to twist the Donald Trump um, campaign to, quote, make it look bad. Uh, and the other thing that I'm going to put into question is, a lot of the email hacks that I've been reporting upon and others have been reporting on, on uh, they're specifically attempting to blame the Russians. Well, you and I both know that that's unlikely. And I said why in my report yesterday. If you guys wanna check that out, you can. Needless to say, the Russians, uh, here we have them being blamed on a lot of the emails. Is there a deeper agenda? And now we have Paul Manafort uh, corresponding with the Russians, so to speak, well, or at least a Ukrainian pro-Russian group. Nonetheless, is there an agenda for a Russian war? Why is there such a target on the back of the Russians? Well, let's bring in Larry Nichols. All right, Larry, are you with me? Yes, ma'am, I'm here. Awesome, I am so excited you got to come on my broadcast. Now, we only have four questions and I'm going to try to just get through them, but I think you are the best man because you know the Clintons inside out. Uh, you are, you worked with them for quite a long time. So I think you're the best man for the job, so to speak. Well, with that, um, recently, we know that Hillary has had a lot of health issues. Uh, she's been reported <clears throat> stumbling down stairs. She's been uh, having weird seizures that people believe to be seizures. Uh, there's um, th medical tools that her handlers are carrying. And most recently, Infowars had leaked, I believe it was a bombshell report yesterday that they put out, Alex Jones and um, Joe Biggs, <clears throat> stating that the Secret Service agent Agent people have came up to them and released information claiming that they believe it's possible. Now, they don't have the actual doctor evidence, but they believe that Hillary has Parkinson's and they believe that because of her mannerism, her actions, and the half a million some odd dollars that they're spending on medical equipment. Now, since you know Hillary and Bill Clinton and um, former advisor to the Clintons, what can you say about her health condition? Is that a legit concern? What is wrong with her? Do you, what's your take? Well, you know, obviously I haven't least been around her in years and years and years, but a lot of this stems from what we had a problem with her back 
when I was with her, Hillary had very, very bad eyes, very bad eyes. And she almost had no peripheral vision. She always had trouble negotiating, walking upstairs, uh, getting on stage. And we tried to always prevent her from being around people going upstairs because she looked like she drunk or something was wrong. Now, a lot of this problem that you hear about today about how she loses her concentration, I'm going to tell you, at least we had that problem with her trying to teach her in the early days of, of uh, oh, what do you call the tele uh, teleprompters. We had trouble with her because you look one way and then you look the other, you look one way, you look the other, and the teleprompter keeps rolling on both of them. When she would switch from one teleprompter to the other side, it would oftentimes take her a long time to catch up with where she left off. And it gives you the impression that she's kind of lost for words, and it's not. She's just trying to catch up with the teleprompter. Now, relevant to the Secret Service telling Alex or anybody else that they think she's got Parkinson's, I'm just going to tell you, Personally, I don't know that I believe, I don't not believe Alex at all. I mean, I believe somebody told him that, but it's just not like the Secret Service to go saying stuff like that. You know, it's just not in their, it's not in their makeup. My word, Lisa, they would be fired in a half a second and they're constant, constantly scrutinized constantly scrutinized for security purposes. Well, I know they did, they didn't reveal the name of the per person to keep, uh, I guess, for their, for the sake of their losing their job and all of that. I know that was right. kind of kept secret. Well, you will learn around the White House, there are no secrets. The walls have ears. Nobody's going to pass something on that somebody doesn't know about. I just, I just don't believe the Secret Service are putting that out now. That could be Clinton people putting it out to throw Alex on a wild, you know, witch hunt. I mean, it could be anything, and it could be true. So just take it, take it for that. But I, I don't know. I, I don't see anything in Hillary's history that I ever knew where she had any relationships that had Parkinson's. I, you know, I just don't. Now, she may have it, but it sure seems a bit far-fetched to me. Now, I will say this. I I mean, I love InfoWars. I listen to all their stuff. I am very pro. And, right. you know, I'm sure, and like I said, they didn't have the actual doctored evidence, but they believed that could be a possibility. Um, do you think maybe that it could be something like a brain injury due to the uh, head damage or what it was it the concussion i believe she had in december right. 2012. you know now that to me is starting to ring a bell with possibly something that's going on so many people think when you especially with athletes and stuff that you see football players are getting concussion remember these football players they get their heads back bashed around all the time boxers get their heads bashed around all the time so their brains used to getting banged up against the side of the skull but you take everyday people when you have a concussion, a concussion has, is prone to be a lot more serious than just a regular person. And a concussion doesn't necessarily end in 30, 60, 90 days. I've seen concussions last, or the, you know, some of the side effects of a concussion last up to two years. I've seen that. So it could very well be that this is still some residual damage from the concussion. Because it can cause brain effects, and she's obviously... You bet. You bet. Oh, yeah. Just go take your head and slam it up against the wall and see right. what happens. And that could be something they're seeing now. Now, I'll just make the disclaimer. We don't know whether it is Parkinson's or not. Like you said, it's been quite a few years uh, since you've been with a woman, and things can develop. So we just don't know, but, but, but we do know she is sick and season, I believe, in some fashion or makes these weird things and pauses in the middle of sentence, which does set up quite a few alarm bells. Now, maybe let me ask this as well, because it's kind of throwing up more. Do you think Obama, let's say they deem her unfit for whatever reason that she's unhealthy, which may not even be likely, but if they did, could they suspend the election? What would happen? Oh, absolutely. Let me tell you what happens. 
If at this late a date, now I don't know what the closeout point is, but the Federal Election Commission some years ago passed a rule that if a candidate, major party candidate for the presidency, gets incapacitated and cannot finish the race, it's up to the party. So in this case, it'd be up to the DNC what they want to do. The DNC could say, well, let's make her vice president. Do y'all want to be it? And then they just keep going. Or they can request of the president to stand that, excuse me, stand down the election and then let the Democrats have another primary. So they could suspend the election if she goes down. Sure could. Now you got that problem. Then you got the problem that if they suspend the election, you have the problem of maybe Obama using the theme of provisional government. This could be a triggering mechanism for it. And then he gets to stay president. Which I surely don't want. Now, I always thought that, you know, that was an unlikely scenario. But with Hillary Clinton's sickness, it's like, <laughs> there's a small possibility. But there is, I think, that possibility. Um, yeah, I, Lisa, I think, it's, I think it should be clear to a lot of people today. A lot of things that we thought or you thought or the folks thought we're outside of the realm possible and that shouldn't be there now we're seeing every day things outside of the realm of possible mm. happen daily it seems like it's not literally daily but it seems like it. absolutely now if um real quick larry i know you have a lot of medical bills so for those of you who would love to donate to larry nichols please do so to paypal uh, Nichols Live, N I C H O L S Live at AOL.com. Uh, I know he's uh, every day, it's almost something different. And, and pray for him too, uh, if you can and when you can. But definitely, um, if you're able to donate, great. He doesn't get paid for all these news reports he gives, he does it out of the kindness of his heart. <laughs> So Larry, with that, um, let's kind of switch gears because I see another attack coming uh, from the Democratic Party against Donald Trump. Now, we know very recently, uh, New York Times and CNN has come out with a report claiming that um, Trump's campaign manager, Paul Manafort, is uh, basically accepting money from a, pr a Ukrainian pro-Russian organization and large sums of this money. What do you think about that entire thing? Oh, Lord. You know, this is something that you and I had talked about. I had heard, you know, Lisa, I had told you I didn't trust him. We had heard things some time ago. This could be a major October surprise that can hurt Trump deeply. You know, it didn't make sense, Lisa, why Hillary, when Trump made his off comment about Putin, you know, how, you know, he respected Putin more than he did Obama. He never said he liked him. He said he respected him more than he did Obama. And then, of course, the DNC and Hillary jumped on it saying that he liked Putin and that they were best buds and then crawled all over it. Well, that was kind of weird. I didn't understand. But now I do. You see, Manafort, who had done business with the Ukraine and ostensibly the Russians, for him to have done business with them, he would have had to have it cleared through, guess what, Secretary of State's office. So they've known about this from day one. They've known about this since the beginning when Manafort got in the race. <laughs> they've known about it. And they're going to use it. You can't trust me. They are going to cram this down Donald Trump's throat. They truly are, Lisa. It's a shame. shouldn't be there. should not be an issue. Manafort should have... He should have made Trump aware of it. They should have made some decision about it long ago. Now they're going to have to eat it. Do you think that um, Paul Manafort is some type of double agent, like a plant in Trump's organization? Oh, Lord, Lisa. You know, I will say this. I don't... I'm not sold on him. I'm not sold on him. I cannot, on your program or anybody else's for that matter, make a statement that I can't prove in a court of law. So I'll just say this. I don't feel good about him being with Trump. I have not since day one. And you know that. I've told you that. But any official 
capacity like we're talking here? I don't know. Good heavens, I don't know. I hope not. But here again, at least here again, how, how do you know? How do you know? You know, Manafort's been a part of the system for years and years and years. And they're all intertwined. You know, it's one of those things, I think, you know, it's just... I mean, we don't really know what the ultimate agenda is with Paul Manafort. Now, I know that he's actually denying those accusations. Right. And I mean, it could be also something that the Democratic Party is doing in response to Hillary because they want eyes off Hillary in, in response to her, um, I mean, her email scandals, their DNC scandals. So they've got to conjure up a scandal here with Paul Manafort. Could it be something they conjured up? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I think there is a, there's no doubt. Okay. Now with that, but, uh, oh, oh, go ahead. Yeah. I mean, there, there's, look, they're going to, Hillary's got the email stuff still hanging and more stuff coming out. So they are fixing to knock the bottom out of that. They're going to use this Manaport thing. And you'll not be able to see much of anything, Lisa, in the news about the additional email leaks. You won't see it. Won't even be out there. Okay, so that leads me, I guess, to my last question. And I really wanted to just kind of get your overall opinion on this um, because I, I see a lot of it happening. Now, we know that Hillary, we have the email scandal with Hillary, all the emails she had on her uh, server, unsecured server. Then we had the leaks through the Democratic National Convention email leaks, quite a bit of those. And most recently, we've had William Reinhardt and George Soros leaks information, uh, or at least some of George Soros organizations, Open Society being one of those and many others, that was leaked on DC leaks. Many, if, if not all, I believe, have been blamed on specifically the Russians, uh, which I did a whole video report on this yesterday, and there was organizations that proved in Russia that George Soros was behind the Ukrainian conflict, and you know, there's so much of this you know, stuff going on, but they actually had documentation. I don't personally believe that the Russians are the ones releasing these emails. And then we have Paul Manafort all of a sudden being linked to the Russians, uh, right. you know, gathering money. So do you see some kind of link here or tie or maybe let me ask bluntly, do you think that they are instigating war with Russia and then putting Donald Trump in the crosshairs, making him pro-Russian, so to speak, so to speak, if we have to go to war with Russia? I mean, what is that all about? I don't think there's any way, Lisa, that even Hillary or Obama, either one, that there's no way they're going to push things to push us in a war with Russia. What they're trying to do is back Trump off of complaining about Obama and Hillary, how they've let Russia trample all over us. That's what this is. You know, Trump has made it quite clear, and he's 100% right. You know, Obama and Hillary have literally let Russia do anything in the world they want to do. They're unopposed. And so they're trying to stop him from hanging that on. That's what they're trying to do. I don't think they're trying to fester up or conjure up a war with Russia. That won't go good. That will not go good for anybody, and we're not going to get the support to do something like that because NATO scared to death of Russia. There's not a NATO country that would support any kind of aggressive action against Russia. No, no. but they are kind of instigating them. That I know. They're putting military yep. on the borders, and mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's well, ticking Russia off. I mean, that's not, not a country I want to mess with. They are, they are no, nuclear. Absolutely not. And you go save, save a with Russia has never worked out well. Never. They, they don't take bluffing well. They really don't. Mm -hmm. But I assure you, you know, any of the NATO aligned countries, when they move their soldiers up to the borders and stuff, that's just to let Russia know, you know, hey, we're serious. But Russia knows just as well as I do that if they wanted to march into any one of those countries, they could do it. None of the other countries in NATO would stop, would work with them to stop it. None of them, unless it'd be America. Right now, I don't. I don't think Russia is going to 
start anything. I think if they're provoked and if they're forced into it, you know, obviously then, then they Lisa, would, but. Let me tell you something. The days of warring between countries like Russia and us, those days, Russia and all these other countries have gotten a lot more sophisticated, smart. Why go to war with us? Why not just own us? You know, they've learned all you got to do to own America is go buy you a bunch of senators and congressmen in Washington. And then anything you want, you get, and you don't have to go to war. You don't have to buy bombs, bullets, and stuff like that. They've all learned America's government in Washington, D.C., and they said, can be bought. And that's a sick idea. Well, Larry, thank you for coming on. Uh, I truly appreciate it, and I, and I value your opinion and your advice on all that. And again, if you guys want to donate, uh, it's at PayPal, and it's Nichols, N-I-C-H-O-L-S, live at AOL.com. Thanks again, Larry, for coming on. All right. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. All right, so there you have it. That is the interview with Larry Nichols, and I think he has some valid points. Um, I do personally believe we need to pay attention to all the Russian instigation that that is being paraded by our mainstream media because there is obviously an agenda there at play. Nonetheless, stay awake, be ready, um, because we are living on the brink of some pretty crazy things. And personally, uh, I think war still is on the table, just my own uh, two cents on that. But uh, I think that, you know, we are living on borrowed time. And if you're not prepared, now is the time to do so. Please make sure you are stocking up with food. Uh, I personally use foodforliberty.com backslash haven. Also, for your health, uh, check out getthetea.com at www.getthetea.com. He's got some great products to keep you healthy, to keep you well maintained, uh, keep your digestive going well. If you're not one that can make the tea, uh, check out D365. Uh, it's a great detox product for on the go and works great as well. Uh, and finally, check out uh, my newest partner at Protovite. Uh, I'm going to leave a link in the information box. You can check that out, but it literally is a blood changer. And I only promote the product because it has truly uh, done leaps and bounds for myself. And I'm reviewing the brain um, the brain one in there as well, which hopefully I'll have something out on that as well. Well, thanks again for tuning in. This is Lisa Haven signing out.